Eye Glaucoma presents Five Key Steps for Surgical Gonioscopy. Hello, my name is Dr. Constance OKK, and I'm a glaucoma specialist and cataract surgeon. I have been performing minimally or microinvasive glaucoma surgery, MIGS, for over 12 years, and when it comes to MIGS, it is really all about the angle. In order to effectively perform the MIGS surgery well, it is essential to establish the fundamentals of surgical gonioscopy. Keep watching and I will share my five top surgical gonioscopy pearls. The first step is tilting of the head. This may appear to be a simple step, but is very important to obtain a great view. Typically for angle surgery, we sit temporally, so it is good to begin by tilting the patient's head 30 to 45 degrees away from where you will be sitting. The next key step is to tilt the microscope towards you in order to achieve finer visualization. Again, this should be about 30 to 45 degree angle towards you. What I have also found very important is that once I have established a nice angle for my routine mix surgery, I mark the microscope with a black marker. This allows me to easily find the angle as I am often going from a position where the microscope is straight for cataract surgery to tilted for the MIGS part of the procedure. Another important strategy is to always ensure your microscope is in focus by starting with the XY position centered prior to starting the surgery. MIGS angle surgery is done under high magnification, therefore completing this step will help to ensure that you have enough range to achieve high magnification. Oversight of this step may lead to inability to increase the magnification for greater visualization of important angle structures during surgery, as you may have exhausted the range of ability for any more magnification. The next key step is how you hold your gonial lens. Swan-Jacob gonial lens is held in the non-dominant hand, which may initially feel uncomfortable, so practice makes perfect. First, before you lay your gonio prism on the surface of the cornea, make sure you are using enough viscoelastic on either the surface of the cornea or on the bottom part of the gonio lens. This will help with visualization. Next, as you make contact with your gonio prism, you want to get a very good, clear view. In order to do this, you cannot have too heavy of a hand as applying too much pressure with your gonio lens can wrinkle the cornea causing corneal striae and a poor view. A heavy hand can also result in loss of the viscoelastic that is pressurizing the anterior chamber, and with the egress of the viscoelastic out of the corneal wound, this can result in decreasing pressure, corneal folds, and a poor view. Loss of pressure can also result in reflux of heme if the trabecular meshwork has been unroofed or removed in any way. Conversely, applying too little pressure on the corneal surface or too little viscoelastic can lead to bubbles in the, in the viscoelastic or air pockets that can also similarly obstruct your view. The next key step is to know what a good view is. When you're looking at the angle, the key to gonioscopy evaluation is distinguishing an on-face view versus a steep angle view. An on-face view is one that is facing forward. It is going to allow you to see all of the angle structures, which will allow you to approach the angle with your device easily. To obtain this view, first make sure your microscope is adequately tilted and that you've rotated the head, patient's head as much as needed. You can also ask the patient to look in the proper direction if they are able to stay stable in that position during the procedure. Another tip to obtain the on-face view during surgery is to use the instrument in your dominant hand and slightly lift your hand up. This movement will rotate the eye away from you to give you more of an on-face view. Notably, if you're too anterior with a steep angle view, when attempting this view, the structures are going to be somewhat obscured as you try to approach them with your device, and this will lead to difficulty making the incisions and performing the procedure. The last key step is knowing your anatomical structures. This is key. To perform angle surgery, you need to know where you are approaching and Typically for angle surgery, whether goniotomy, canaloplasty, or using stents, you're going to approach the trabecular meshwork and address the Schlem's canal behind. A strong understanding of angle anatomy will also help you determine where angle structures are when the anatomy does not look typical. If you have anatomy that is well pigmented, you can easily see the trabecular meshwork, but sometimes the trabecular meshwork may be a little bit lightly pigmented 
and what may be more pigmented is the ciliary body or the ciliary body band. In order to try to tease this out when it is confusing, try to find pigment or heme. These indicate uh, the trabecular meshwork, and I see it here. One way to help highlight a lightly pigmented trabecular meshwork is to either remove viscoelastic or aqueous humor from the AC to lower the pressure in the eye. After temporarily lowering the pressure, when you go back into the eye and repressurize it, you will see with the gonio lens that there is reflux blood in Schlem's canal. The reflux of heme highlights the location of the trabecular meshwork and will allow you to orient yourself to the patient's anatomy. I hope these tips help in your journey of mastering MIGS. If you like what you watched, give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the Eye Glaucoma YouTube channel for more videos as they come out. You can also check out my series of MIGS University as well as MIGS Plus Meds University out now. Thanks for watching.